Hey guys, I apologize for uploading part 104 a bit later than what I originally intended to, but my good interwebs buddies Dark Blaze and Nico worked very hard on that Hitler video that I put up on my front page and on Saturday, so I decided I was going to give that video a fair shot at getting seen by you people and keep it on the front page on Saturday and on Sunday I would upload part 104 for everyone to see and if you haven't seen the Hitler video yet it's uh, at the second spot in my favorites right now so I strongly recommend that that you check it out because seriously <laughs> just uh, I'd, I'd say something about the concept of uh, Hitler poke playing Pokemon being absurd but seriously it's still one of the best Hitler rant parodies out there, in my opinion. So you really ought to check it out if you haven't done so yet. Even if you use a uh, four fire move Charizard, because in that case, then the, then the joke is going to go straight over your head, and you probably won't be offended at all. At all. And uh, by the way, the, the 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 global link is going to open up on Wednesday. So uh, that means I'm going to try and upload. Um, a video tomorrow but after that there's probably gonna be nothing for the rest of the week because I want to try the dream world out for one thing and even though I know it sucks monkey balls I still want to try it try figuring me out it's probably because of the abilities otherwise I wouldn't even care about it so yeah it's opening up on uh, Wednesday so if you're interested in the new dream world abilities I strongly recommend that you check it out and, uh, well, yeah, of course they hold items. Mm, okay. What does this guy want? Oh. Uh, okay, so he's gonna explain to us each and every one of those items. And, uh, okay, this is for the Lumberry, which automatically cures any status its holder has. And let me just check how long it is. Oh, it's just that? Well then, it just so happens to be some of the most commonly used items in competitive play. Because I don't remember that guy being in Diamond and Pearl, so... It's, it's yet another hint uh, in my theory that uh, someone at Game Freak or Nintendo actually follows what's going on in competitive play, because this can't be a coincidence that these uh, all these items are among the most commonly used uh, competitively. So we saw Lumberry, Focus Sash, Expert Belt, this is the Life Orb, and we're also going to get Exposition on the Choice item, Choice Scarf, which boosts the speed by 50% at the expense of being locked into one move until you switch out. And the Choice Man and Choice Specs are the same, they boost the attack and special attack respectively by 50%. But you're locked into a move which this guy conveniently didn't say for the choice man. That's like the main thing about the choice man. You're locked into your move. And, and same thing for choice specs. How could he forget that? He mentioned it for the choice scarf, but not for the band or specs. And of course, leftovers, which is uh, the neck plus ultra of balanced items when uh, you don't really want any drawbacks and. Uh, well, the expert belt's not for you. Uh, the leftovers are pretty much a must on any defensive Pokémon, so they're probably the most common item out there. That's not to say it's the only good item, like uh, what was going on in Generation 2. So I think we're done in the fighting area, so let's actually do this. Let's fight uh, Flint and Valkner in a doubles battle, which is a, a new addition to Platinum. This fight wasn't there at all in Diamond and Pearl, so if you're trying to follow along on Diamond and Pearl, you won't see this fight anywhere. And actually, I think there are a few people who play along with my LPs with whatever game they have. So I, I think it's pretty cool, actually. And it shows a certain level of dedication that, uh, well, I would never take it that far for any LP -er. But whatever, the battle begins, and do you see what I see? Oh, we're gonna have some earthquake and fun here. All right. So earthquake on. The oh crap! Well, that's not good. Hopefully, Giratina can take the hit. Oh yeah, it did like a pro. And now 
Well, why weren't you just a little faster, Staraptor? I think Staraptor is supposed to be faster than Houndoom. Then again, it's got a small level disadvantage, so... Didn't work out that well, but anyway, the Houndoom is dead, which is a shame because I wanted to get a double KO with the Earthquake. And it doesn't affect Staraptor, which is awesome. Way better than uh, had he led with his Snorlax like he did uh, at the Spear Pillar when it was a Munchlax. Oh, come on! I didn't want to hit KO that Luxray. This seems to be a recurring theme in this LP. That Giratina can kill pretty much anything but Luxrays! And Crunch for more ouchies. Thankfully, Staraptor's Intimidate uh, worked very well, so let's Earthquake these two. What?! Oh, come on! He's sending his Heracross in the line of fire! Seriously, I rarely ever see the AI switch, and this was one horrendous switch. Yeah, let's take away the flying Pokémon from an Earthquake spamming partner. Brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! At least Luxray went down this time, and is Flareon gonna go down too? Probably. No! It just barely survived! God, can't this guy kill anything in one hit? Overheat on Heracross, well, I figured, because it's not very effective on Giratina, so it would have been a waste. Is it gonna kill it? Probably. Yeah. Flareon's special attack isn't that great, but it's not rock bottom either. It's just such a shame that its huge attack stat goes to waste, else it might actually be a pretty decent Pokémon. Anyway, Floatzo, not gonna help. Well, actually, Aqua Jet is gonna finish off Larion, denying me a two, uh, not a two-hit KO, but a double KO yet again. Thunder Punch on Floatzo, well, that's not good. Probably gonna die. Probably, maybe? Nope, didn't survive. His stuff survives in the red, but Barry's Pokémon just freaking suck. Damn, that's two Pokémon of his that got but right, and uh, I think his, uh, was his star after at full health? I don't remember, but, okay, at least Electivire went down in one hit this time, so I think they're both down to, uh, one Pokemon each. We haven't seen Jolteon, we haven't seen Magmortar, so those must be the final two. So, here we go. We got Jolteon, Snorlax, and also Magmortar. So, Okay, can I get a double KO this time? I doubt it, because if I couldn't kill a Luxray and Flareon, I am probably not going to be able to kill a Magmortar in one hit. Okay, Charge Beam didn't raise special attack. Well, this is sort of rare. It has a 70% chance of doing so, but I tend to always assume that special attack is going to go up when you use Charge Beam. The surprising thing is that it didn't have any improvement to have it become like a mirror image of Flame Charge or anything, or anything like that. It only keeps that 70% added effect and uh, the 90 accuracy instead of being 100 in both. And Magmortar, as I predicted, survived and even got to uh, munch on a citrus berry. Oh, great. <laughs> I crit hacked my own partner with Earthquake. Just freaking wonderful. At least I get a level up out of the deal. Thanks, Jolteon. So, Flamethrower, yeah. I'm not sure if that Snorlax has a thick fat, maybe it's got immunity, I don't really know, but... Oh wow, it survived in the red! Way to take the hit like a champ, Snorlax. Didn't do much damage, but defense fell, not that it really matters, because I was just gonna kick its ass with Dragon Claw anyway. And thus ends this uh, not-so-epic double battle, because it's basically 12 Pokémon versus 6, and, uh, Barry's Pokémon are all cannon fodder. I don't really care what happens to them, even though they don't steal any experience from me in this generation. And now Flint is the one that has no words to describe what just happened. Don't burn out on us. Yeah, this is odd, because usually Vaultner is the one who, um, says nothing while Flint's all, hey, hey! Blah, 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 blah. Never freaking stops, but now nah, I guess it's one of those comical role reversal things. Got a lot tougher. Bullshit! Oh, like father, like son. We just had Palmer, a 
thud right into Barry here, and yes, Palmer is Barry's dad, which I conveniently forgot in the first part of this LP, or was it the Emerald one? I forget. But anyway, Barry does have a father, unlike uh, most RPG children. So, yeah, he's the Tower Tycoon, and one of the frontier brains of uh, this iteration of the Battle Frontier. We're not going to be fighting him in this LP, though. I'm going to do what I did in Emerald and uh, provide a little insight on each of the facilities without actually fighting in them. That is cool, huh? Well, at least he's a lot better than you, even if he does butt into people a lot. Okay, want to be cool like my dad? Well, tough freaking luck, because just looking at you, you're already a failure on every possible account. Going to get tougher by a lot. You're going to need it, because right now, you still freaking suck! And, oh, hey, look at that. This guy here is Buck. He's um, the fifth and last stat trainer who we're going to fight alongside with... Uh, at Stark Mountain, but that's quite a ways from here. But, yeah, he was very impressed on how I beat a gym leader in an Elite Four like that, completely oblivious to the fact that I beat the freaking champion of all things. But, yeah, this... These counters, rather, are where you get introduced to the Battle Frontier. And right now I'm getting my Versus Recorder upgraded so that I can record any fight that takes place in the Battle Frontier. Okay, so we're gonna talk to all these people, and... But first, yeah, there are a few things about the Battle Frontier, a few general things that we're going to go over. The Battle Tower, the objective is to beat seven trainers in a row. The Battle Hall, you may keep battle records of individual Pokémon. This is pretty cool, the Battle Hall. We'll see more about it when you get there. Battle Factory, same as in Emerald. Battle Castle, you manage castle points to buy stuff. And the Battle Arcade is where random events randomly occur if you haven't had enough of the Neon Coliseum in uh, Battle Revolution. And yeah, no experience from the Battle Frontier, as usual. There's a level 50 mode and an open level mode, as usual, once again. there There's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to repeat uh, uh, compared to the Emerald LP. Battle points are being referred to as BP here. You can use them to buy stuff or pollute the Gulf of Mexico and foobar it beyond recognition for generations to come. Yeah, just had to make that joke, sorry. Anyway, the exchange corner is where you buy stuff uh, in the Battle Frontier. You can buy TMs, uh, no, Move Tutors, that's for Hard Gold and Soul Silver, but you can buy TMs, items, and all kinds of good stuff. Obviously, all the high end items can be obtained here, and they cost a buttload of BP. So if you want those items, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time in the Battle Frontier. So here are those five clerks are going to explain me each facility uh, in a nutshell. The Battle Tower basically is the same thing as, as it's always been. It's been in every game since Samurai, though in black and white it's called uh, the Battle Subway, but it's the exact same thing. You fight battles in uh, strings of seven, and you fight and fight and fight and build a winning streak until you lose. The Battle Hall here, well, yeah, it's one-on-one -on -one battles, but the system is actually pretty nifty. It's um, it's quite a handful to explain right now, so I'm going to wait until I actually get there to explain how it works. Battle Factory, same as the Battle Tower, but it's with rentals, and at the end of each battle, you can trade one of your rentals with the one of the opponent that you just defeated to build up a decent team that will allow you to continue your winning streak. The, this one is the Battle Castle. Yeah, the Battle Castle, uh, it's sort of like the Battle Tower in a way, but you're given a um, castle point between each battle that you must manage. Your Pokémon are not healed between each battle, unlike in the Battle Tower. So yeah, you, you gotta keep a winning streak alive while buying healing stuff with your castle points. And the Battle Arcade, well, it's like the Battle Tower once again. But before each battle, there is uh, one scenario that is chosen randomly. For example, the opponent's Pokémon are all paralyzed, or your Pokémon are all burned, and it's decided randomly. So, yeah, have fun with that! 
So next time we're actually going to get into each facility in a little more detail than that.